Yo guys, what is up? It is your boy James the Ace. Welcome back to another video today. In this video, I'm going to be teaching every single one of you how to build up an absolute Goliath, a monster of a legendary death, and take it directly into Q. Start freaking slaying everyone, dude. Legendary death has become top three on the tier list, in my opinion, easily since drains got buffed. They now take 100% effect of the enchant that you use on them instead of two thirds. I don't know what King's Awe was thinking back then. Uh, drains, they aren't overpowered right now that the update came out, but uh, they are definitely good and worth using. Vampire, Wraith, Scarecrow. I mean, these spells got buffed and they are heavy hitting yeah this it's gotten pretty hectic man legendary death is definitely a freaking goliath at level 60. so before i get into the rundown of legendary death i do want to say that the good thing about taking up a death to level 60 is that you technically don't need to do winter tusk because the winter tusk spell at level 55 is virulent plague and unless you're planning on doing a lot of 2v2s or 3v3s or 4v4s um the update pvp update coming out pretty soon might bring those back i don't really know uh but unless you're planning on doing a lot of those maybe tournament wise probably uh you're not really going to want to uh do the level 55 spell quest so uh the stress of doing winter tusk is pretty much non-existent it's not necessary i should say for death or as for myth for talos it's definitely necessary or for insane ball for storm absolutely necessary um so that's one thing the other thing uh which is kind of the the downside uh to not having to do winter tusk is that you do have to do all of the prospector zeke quests so uh just a simple youtube uh tutorial of where the smiths are or where the lizards are in celestia will definitely be your best friend on finding all of those but uh it will make sense later as to why you need to do that but just trust me you need to do all of your training point quests all the way up until zafaria i'm pretty sure because you need eight training points to trade into the school of myth uh, and I will get into that or why you need to do that a little bit later on in this video. Just trust me, it will make sense. All right, boys. So with that being said, we're getting into the gear setup for Legendary Death. Now, I choose to run the Hangman's Hood. Uh, I run this because it gives more resist, a little bit more power pip, uh, and the same amounts of damage, believe it or not, than the House of Scales hat. So as you can see, side by side comparison, uh, there's a little bit of a health deviation. However, that power pip percent gap is pretty big, uh, especially when it comes to level 60. If you're fail pipping on a death, I mean, it's pretty it's going to be a bad day uh, especially in that match uh for you uh same amount of damage so you're really not getting a whole lot other than like crit and maybe a little bit of accuracy uh for that trade-off i would say the only reason i would use the house of scales hat instead of the waterworks hat uh, in any situation is if i was probably going glass cannon uh, which is definitely a viable strategy for level 60 death um or if you were doing a quick match tournament and you needed the extra bit of crit. So that's pretty much the only situation that I would trade off uh, the Waterworks hat for the House of Scales hat. For the robe, definitely going to be using the House of Scales robe. It is the best robe by trade for Legendary Death. Side-by-side uh, -side comparison with the Waterworks robe, uh, it gives accuracy a little less power per percent. It's really something that you can definitely live without. Uh, a little bit less health, but it is what it is. Uh, more damage, more crit, a little less resist. Uh, overall, the House of Scales robe is going to be the best offensive robe for Legendary death hands down for boots this is where it gets a little bit hectic a little bit pay to win uh the dorgan's dire boots are definitely going to be uh as you probably guessed a pack uh, piece of equipment it comes from the professor's horde pack now although the pack is 399 and crowns it's definitely not a uncommon drop uh, it's definitely super common within the pack you should probably get it within the first like 10 pack pops uh, to my knowledge the pack itself drops gear pretty often i would say so it's not really that hard of a drop i would definitely drop at least like five dollars worth of crowns on the uh, professor's horde pack just to get these boots um, you have to be having a really bad luck sort of day uh, to not get like uh, any sort of death piece at all. It's pretty common in the pack. So uh, definitely shouldn't give you too many problems there. Uh, for the wand, however, uh, is another pack wand. Uh, I apologize, but uh, this comes from the Immortals Lore pack. Now, this is kind of a hit or miss because the only other substitute for these boots is probably going to be the Hangman's boots, which uh, in trade, the Waterworks boots are probably going to be 
uh, the substitute for a lot of the things uh, that you can't get from packs or that you can't get from other dungeons. But as you can see, the trade-off is not really that good. Uh, there, it's, it's definitely in the Professor's Horde Boots uh, favor. You get crit, uh, the damage is the same, you get a little bit more resist, you get accuracy, you get more power pit, more health. Uh, the only bad thing is that you don't get that block that the Hangman's Boots are giving, but uh, at Legendary, it's pretty much whoever crits first uh, wins, or whoever crits more. So, yeah, that crit is definitely going to make the difference in most of your matches, but uh, the Hangman's Boots are probably going to be the only uh, substitute uh, for the Dwarken Dire Boots if you can't get those from the pack. Now, uh, moving on to the wand. It is another pack wand. This is kind of a hit or miss. Uh, if you absolutely cannot get this wand from the Immortals Lore Pack, um, then I definitely suggest getting to Warlord using the Sky Iron Hostage. I know it sounds crazy because it's a level 30 wand. It's mainly used at like Magus, but it's 10 universal damage and it's definitely something that you can just coast off of and destroy people with until you get to Warlord and then eventually get the tickets to buy the Staff of the Flashing Blades. And the Staff of the Flashing Blades is going to be the best uh, substitute trade-off in terms of you not being able to obtain the uh, the Aquilin Charioteer Lance, which is the best offensive uh currently uh wand for legendary death uh the may cast is super good for changing the opponent's bubble uh and it just gives ridiculous uh stats i mean it gets crit and block and the crit and block is actually similar to that of the staff of the flashing blades uh it gives damage and that pierce obviously it's just really it's really good it can't be beat moving on to the athame obviously at the end of your build uh your complete build is going to be built with the duelist fatal razor and the duelist daredevil ring now Obviously, if you just brought up a death, you're not going to have all of these tickets and you're not going to be uh, Actually, I don't think you need to be warlord to, to have the duelist of Thaman ring But uh, if you don't have the tickets uh, And you need to do tournaments and you need pretty good damage stats from your Thaman ring There's a level 56 ring and a Thame that can be bought from the bazaar uh, Sometimes it's not it's not always in the bazaar uh, But they both should be in the bazaar pretty fluently. So I would just pay a visit to the bazaar every so often uh, they are level 56 and they are school specific. So make sure that you um, You attune those things when you're looking through the bazaar through the search engine or whatever And uh, you should be able to find your 56 uh, replacements for the athaman ring until you're able to uh, Acquire enough arena tickets for these things now the amulet is it's kind of up in the air A lot of people like to run myth mastery. They like to run uh, myth banshee They like to run the medusa strat into like faint ghoul or something like that uh, definitely not a bad strategy. However, if you don't have any other mastery than life, uh, I feel like the life mastery is pretty much like a, a constant on most accounts. Life mastery is not a bad option. Even if you have no other mastery or no other amulet that you can run, uh, there is one other amulet that I'll get into in a second that you can buy with gold that gives a blade. It's actually really, really good, but life mastery can be good for throwing people off. Uh, if they see a life mastery, nine times out of ten, they're going to want to infection you, uh, in which case, if you're not running any satyrs, then it's a completely free round. Uh, you can blade that round. You can stun that round if they didn't stun. Uh, you can hit that round if they didn't, uh, you know, choose to shield. So it's definitely a good throw off. Uh, however, not a lot of deaths. In fact, I would say none that I've ever seen use life mastery. Uh, however, if you aren't planning on using a mastery at all, there is a shop over here in the Baobab market. You can come up to this uh, merchant over here and she sells the Shango's Death Blade Amulet. This is the only other substitute to the amulet that I'm wearing right now, uh, which is the Phylactery of the Wicked. Now, uh, the Shango's Amulet does cost 55000 I think it's cheaper in the Bazaar. Don't quote me on that. It might be cheaper, uh, but I pre I'm pretty sure you can find the, uh, the Shango's Amulet in the Bazaar. But the Phylactery of the Wicked is probably the best Legendary Death non-mastery amulet in the game. It gives two death damage and 95 health, a square socket, and a health socket uh, for the tier. And um, it's, it's overall a really good amulet because it gives a blade and that damage and a little bit of health so i would definitely grind for this if you're super into like having your stats like real top tier uh however this amulet is not a common drop and it's dropped from the lower zigzag boss the last boss in that dungeon i believe uh that boss is storm and it's a it's a crocodile boss and that dungeon is the first dungeon that you have to do uh before 
gaining access to the House of Scales dungeon. So it's a two dungeon area, and you get that quest from talking to Alhazer Red as soon as you hit level 60. And he will give you the quest to complete Lower Zigzag, and then after that, you can start farming House of Scales for uh, your robe and hat or whatever else have you. Moving on to pets. Pets are kind of up in the air. Uh, this is my main go-to pet. I have another pet that I won't show in this video because I'm planning to make a video with it. The pet that I run is a triple damage, double resist, virulence pet because damage auras are actually really good in this era. However, uh, may cast fortify, may cast infallible. Uh, the other may cast, they aren't bad may cast. They just, I would say, cast a lot less often. The best staple pet that you can have for any legendary school, however, is a triple double. So as long as you have at least like two damages and proof, I would say it's not going to be that hard for you to get Warlord uh, as long as you have a pretty good strategy behind uh, what you want to do. Last but not least, the Soul Devourer's Arcana is the best legendary deck in the game hands down. It gives a 1% universal accuracy, but aside from that little addition, it allows you to have seven max copies of spells that aren't your own school, which not many other decks give. In fact, the only other substitute deck for this deck is the Undead deck. And as you can see, it's seven max copies for the best deck versus five max copies uh, that aren't your school for the Undead deck. So uh, the Soul Devourer's Arcana, as I told you in the beginning, is the best legendary deck for any school. And all of those decks can be obtained from Belash. Uh, he is the stone key boss within the zigzag dungeon, the same dungeon where you're going to be getting uh, your robe, uh, your hat, uh, the boots aren't really that good. Same overall dungeon, uh, but again, he is a stone key boss, so you are going to need stone keys, and he does cheat, uh, but his cheats are very easy to get around. All you have to do is make sure someone like one pip hits him every single round, otherwise he does end up using a raw and that is going to really stink because raw in the new update uh, that is currently live gives a 40 percent weakness i'm pretty sure that's the one he's using right now so uh, if he ends up cheating because you didn't hit him a certain round that is going to stink all right so the deck setup right um pause the screen if you want to uh build off of my deck setup and or copy it i don't really mind uh here is the tc setup uh, in case you were wondering what that is now the biggest takeaways for main deck and side deck are going to be simply this four stun blocks are definitely recommended uh four set shields for some elementals and four set shields for spirituals uh four blades bare minimum uh doom and glooms at least five i think i have six in right now uh ghouls i only have two in in main deck because in side deck i have uh some rare tc ghoul that you cannot make anymore i made these post or pre-patch uh i should say uh but i will definitely be putting more ghouls in main deck uh pretty soon here um have this horseman it's just it's an unbeatable spell if you don't have it i would definitely wait for halloween uh stash some money to the side so that you can pop some packs for this i hope it becomes craftable pretty soon uh poison very self-explanatory scarecrow just trust me on this at least put one in if you get the enchant on it and somebody summons a minion it's i mean you're basically gonna like crit sater like like freaking pre-patch crit sater it is stupid uh bone dragon again self-explanatory drain's got buffed vampire is now one of your best four pip uh i need health back spells it is so good especially uh for wraith as well uh 500 and then it's doing like 775 if you enchant it with colossal it's dumb it is so dumb this spell will do mass if you crit and then the absolute biggest takeaways for tc i told you guys that it would make sense later in the video but mutate deadly minotaur is going to be like your game saving grace spell when they're below 2k health and you have either a blade or an infall up this spell does absolute mass it is a game ender uh when they fall below the 2k threshold you need to train into minotaur into myth all the way up to minotaur and that's eight training points aside from you know needing stun blocks from diego and then 
uh, training into uh, ice for uh, obviously tower shield, right? You need eight training points so that you can transmute Minotaur. I promise you this is the best thing that you can do for your legendary death. So at least three to four of those in, again, it, it just, it can't be beat. If they throw up a tower shield, you do freaking deadly Minotaur with a blade up, it's doing mass damage. Other than that, at least have three to four death blade inside some info and shift is honestly one of the most underrated and i never see it used this is the epitome of beating ice the epitome of beating myth fire and the death v death matchup uh which in my opinion is probably death's easiest matchup is itself because deaths love to triple or or double blade and crit poison or crit bone dragon and you just flip that joint right back bro and the game is over they try to hit you with freaking uh deadly minotaur if you have a tower shield up or they or they try to uh headless horseman you and then you hit them with that wraith after shifting get all that health back mine b uh-uh yeah, it, and, and the game is pretty much over and they get mad every single time i'm telling you so uh, definitely, if you have no deck set up in mind, build off of mine, uh, build your own uh, to your liking, make your own strategy, uh, or, or just use mine. I have no problem with you just using mine. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video. Please drop a like if you have enjoyed or if I have enticed you at all to make a legendary death and uh, subscribe if you want to see more legendary pvp videos or legendary uh setups in the future when i do end up trying more schools so with that being said thank you all for watching this has been james the ace and i'll catch you all in the next video peace